Go get her family. What's up? Back in the building. Oh, let me get this right. Okay. So check it out, man. I, I'm coming to you guys today um, with a few things. We're going to talk about a few things today, guys. But I'm bringing you what I promised I was going to bring you, which is um, when I went in front of City Hall for my seller on this red tag that I'm making this money off of um, over $10,000 and also that I'm helping um, save him from financial ruin and then also my buyer we're helping him get some passive income uh, for his retirement. He's been a contractor for, I don't know, like over 40 years, 40 years, something like that. Oh, my Larry son's down here getting something for his mom. Come say hi to the camera real quick. He say you, you good looking like his pops. Hey. Hey, all right, get up out of here. You ruined my shot. What? <laughs> all right, guys, so anyway, where was I? Oh, our contractor. Yeah, he's been in business for over, uh, you know, around 40 years or something like that. So he's getting ready to retire soon. Need some passive income, man. So it's it's a win-win-win situation and a win for the city, guys. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about something first. Um, first, man, why I'm doing this, period, why I'm doing this at all, why the Go-Getter family even um, exists is to bring the knowledge to the people that it takes to gain financial freedom. That's what I want. That's what I want for my family, man, my Go-Getter family. That's what I want for you guys, the knowledge. And then what will get you there is the knowledge that it takes. And then also, we're going to help you guys create a mindset that it takes to take action, right? So the first thing I wanted to talk about, actually, didn't have anything to do with none of that, all right? None of that matters right now. None of that matters if you can't get over one thing, guys, and that is fear, okay? That if, you, if we can't get over our fears, we'll never take action. We'll never take action, man. Um... And I was I was guilty of that, you know, for a long time, man. You know, you, your fear is a, a made up thing, guys, and, and so is faith. You know, faith is made up too. You know, so so we have the ability to choose. You know, which one are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the thought in our head that tells us uh, something bad's going to happen, or we're going to fail, or we're not going to do it right, or are we going to change? Are we going to choose a thought that says, "I'm going to do this." I'm going to accomplish my goal and um, everything's going to be right. And guess what? If everything isn't right, that's OK, because if I make a mistake, I'm going to fix that mistake and I'm going to move on and I'm going to accomplish what I set out to accomplish. So which one are you guys going to choose, man? You know, like think about this. All right. Um, we we can't create anything unless we think about it first. So, hold, yeah, just think about that for a second. We can't create anything unless we think about it first, okay? Let that sink in. Let it sink in, go-getters, because <clears throat> the, the power of thought and the power of our mind is the most powerful thing that we have, okay? So, so what I mean by that is we can't create anything unless we think about it first so we can create a, a level of confidence and um, a level of commitment and a level of ambition and um, the willingness for hard work, we can create that in our minds because we just tell ourselves we're going to do it. And and this is what's going to happen. And good things are going to come. You know, that's what I tell myself all of the time, man. And I can't even tell you guys, I say this a lot, but I can't even stress enough. Like how many times things have just materialized right in front of me when I needed it to happen the very second, man, just like, um, just like with this deal. You know, um, it, it was a long deal, guys. It took a long, it took a long time because of, uh, you know, bankruptcies and we had to do forfeitures. And I'm going to give you guys some game on that, too, man. I'm going to give you guys some game on that because there's some things, man, you can get like liens uh, um, off of property and stuff like that, you know, without having to pay uh, much of anything. Like it cost me, it cost us, I guess. Well, I guess I did pay for the forfeiture, which it's on the board, uh, um, 500 bucks to get a $10,000 lien removed from that property, guys. Yeah, and I'm sure I never knew that. I never knew that prior to this. So if you guys are watching this, I'm gonna guess that you guys didn't know that either. But guess what, go get her family. I'm here to give you the game. Yeah, the kid is gonna give you the game, guys. So check it out. Um, also, man, you know, our, our, I wanted to say this too before I get into the deal, man. Our thoughts become physical manifestations. They, they do, guys. Just if you sit back and think about it, man, you're always told to um, visualize. Like if you play sports, you know, visualize the, the ball going in the basket. Um, visualize the bat hitting the ball. 
you know, uh, visualize yourself crossing that finish line, right? That's a thought when you're visualizing it. It's a thought. So they become, they, they manifest into physical things. So I have visualized myself for years, years getting to this point. But I put in the hard work too. But I, I, contr I can control my mind now, guys. I have an undefeated mind. I mean, there isn't, and I've been through some stuff, man. But now it's like when a hard thing comes up, it doesn't, um, it doesn't affect me, I guess, like most, you know, I don't take it as a, a difficult situation or like, what was me or whatever. I, I told a person once, um, you know, like a, he was a good person, man, a good young guy, man, good young king. He could be somebody. And, um, you know, he's just going through some tough times. And I said, man, just, uh, think about it like this. You know, when you slip and fall down, you got a brand new pair of jeans on, you slip and fall down and, um, they get all dirty and get all muddy. Right. I don't want your first thought to be, Oh man, oh, my jeans are muddy. I just got my new jeans all muddy. No, if we can switch that to, we, you fall down, those jeans get muddy. Your first thought is, how do I get this dirt off my jeans? What do I need to do to get this dirt off my jeans? If that is your first thought, you'll be undefeated. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, all right? So guys, on this video, um, there's gonna be some video of me at City Hall, okay? Um, there's, uh, uh, um, at the city council meeting, talking to the, uh, council members, the mayor, um, the city manager, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, then, you know, helping my seller out. Um, so, you know, we got some good stuff in there. And then I told you guys, right, that, uh, on the last video, I was like, oh man, I should have, I should have showed you guys the deed, right? My go-getter family. So, uh, I wanted to bust this out for you guys, man. This thing's old. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover this address up right here, right? But this is a deed, man. They call it, um, it's called an abstract where I'm from. It's called an abstract. So this is the deed, man, to this house, man. Look how old this thing is. Look at that. It's got all the records from every transaction that was done in on this property is in here. They call it, um, they do an abstract continuation, which is, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that later. But, uh, yeah, this is the deed, guys. And, and you're about to see how much I, I put into this deal. <laughs> to make, whew, uh, I think it's like a, over a little, a little over, um, a thousand percent, I think. I didn't even do the math on that, I guess, but it's a lot, you know what I mean? And, um, I just had to put in a little bit of hard work, um, a little bit of ingenuity, uh, a lot of knowledge that I had gained, you know, but I put in the work to gain that knowledge. That's why I'm here to spread it to you guys. You know what I mean? So, uh, let's get started. So these, this is, these are the numbers, uh, uh to this deal. Okay. Uh, the price the sales price, it's 13,718 bucks, all right? Now, there was back taxes on this place because uh, it's been red tagged since uh, March March of last year. So now in Iowa, where I'm at, you pay your tax, uh, um, your tax year, you actually paid the year before. So like for, for 2021, when those taxes come due in uh, September, they're due in September here, uh, we'll actually be paying 2020's taxes, right? So that kind of helped me out on this deal. I mean, it just made me more money because we're taking the back taxes out of this of, of the sale price. So the sales price is thirteen thousand seven hundred and eighteen bucks. Back taxes owed for uh, two years is two thousand six hundred and twenty bucks. All right. So that leaves eleven thousand ninety eight bucks. All right. Now we're gonna get to the forfeiture. Right. This is the this is the beautiful part about this, guys. You gotta hear this story too, man. It is great. I, I I love it, man, because when people are greedy, nothing good comes from that, all right? Nothing good comes from greed, guys. Don't covet money, man. Don't do it, all right? So check it out. Uh, a forfeiture is like the same thing as a foreclosure, okay? But a forfeiture, um, you do a forfeiture on somebody that's buying a house on contract, okay? Like when you're buying a house with a mortgage, the bank will foreclose on you. Well, since when, or when you buy a house on contract, the homeowner is the bank, right? This is how we turn our people into the bank, man. This is how we turn into the bank, right? So now that I'm power of attorney for both the owner and his wife, limited power of attorney, um, I'm the bank guy. Yeah, the go-getter family bank. Yeah, that's how we do it. So anyway, a forfeiture, same thing as a foreclosure, right? So check this out. There was a $10,000 lien on the property. And, uh, man, I'm going to give you guys some, I'm going to give you guys a gem, man. My partner's, uh, uh my partner's going to get after me for this. Um, and you, I can't wait for you guys to meet my partner, man. You, you'll never believe this. She was actually a coaching client of mine and she exhibited so much skill, um, ingenuity, um, commitment and hard work that when my website comes out, it's going to say 
president of the go-getter family, which was me, and then the vice president is her. And she was a coaching client. She actually paid me to coach her. And now she's a she's a full partner. I mean, it's I love it, man. It's crazy. So anyway, um, we had to do this forfeiture because there was a $10,000 lien on the property, okay? The contract holder, the contract buyer, right? She's buying the, she was buying the place on contract. Well, um, she gave the per, the seller who I'm power, limited power of attorney of, she gave him $20 towards the 10000 that she was going to buy this place for. And uh, her boyfriend, who was a contractor, uh, was going to fix the place up. Well, they had a realtor that was going to finance it, okay? Finance all the repairs. Realtor was going to pay for all the repairs. So the realtor gives the uh, the boyfriend, who's a contractor, 10000 bucks. She gives him $10,000 to put towards the repairs. Well, the contractor runs off with it. You know what I mean? He had $10,000 in his hand. He was like, man, I'm not fixing nothing. I'm about to go uh, uh, to the casino or uh, to the bar. I don't know where he went. I know he didn't go back to that house and fix anything up. Shh. I know that for sure. I'm. You guys have seen pictures of the house. That thing is beat up, and I ain't. I didn't fix anything either. I didn't swing a hammer or nothing. So anyway, um, when I'm when I'm negotiating this house, right, on um, the purchase of this house, there's this ten thousand dollar lien on there, and this is why I say take action because I didn't know that this worked like this until I got to negotiating this, right. So when you take action, you learn things, and you learn things that are gonna that are gonna help you. So, the the realtor that got the ten thousand dollars stole from her. She put a lien on the property for that $10,000. So I'm like, oh man, there's a $10,000 lien on this property and the property is barely worth $10,000, you know, until it's fixed up and then it's going to be worth, you know, over 124000 I think, but it's going to cost a lot to fix it up. So anyway, um, I go to her and I'm say, I say, hey, I've got a person that wants to buy this place and I see that you got this $10,000 lien on it. And um, I said, how about uh, we give you, we'll give you 5,000 bucks, you know, because you can negotiate liens down with the, whoever the lien holder is, you can negotiate them. So I say, how about we give you 5,000 bucks? And she's like, uh, oh, she was bull. She, uh, she was like 5,000 bucks. She's like, I don't even really care about the money. I don't care about the money. I don't need the money because she owns properties and rental company and she's a realtor. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, okay. You know, I'm just some little old regular guy, right? Well, check this out, right? The go get, we're go getters, man. So we don't stop at obstacles. She didn't want to negotiate. Um, so I'm like, well, man, I can't, um, I mean, if I can't negotiate this $10,000 lien, there's nothing I can do with the house because there's no, really no money in it because of the back taxes. So I uh, I go to my lawyer's office and, um, you know, to bring the contract for the, that the contract buyer had that she didn't pay. She didn't pay the taxes, stuff like that. Well, he tells me, guys, and this is a gem. My partner's going to get after me. He says, we can do a forfeiture. And by doing that forfeiture, it'll the lien will be dissolved from the property itself, okay? So the lien, the lien goes with the person, guys, just like a mortgage in a subject to. It's with the person. Yeah, it's with the person. That's the beautiful part about subject to and creative owner financing, man. Once you know it, you guys, we become the bank. So anyway, the lien goes with the person. So all we've got to do is file a forfeiture, which is the same thing as a foreclosure. You fill out some paperwork, sign it, um, and then you bring it to a, a servicer and then the servicer, um, you know, brings it to, uh, you know, the people that come up and say, hey, you've been served and they surprise you, that type of stuff. So the servicer brings it to the contract holder, serves the contract holder. And then um, the, uh, uh, when you do a forfeiture or foreclosure, they have to publish that. OK, they have to publish it in a local publication for at least uh, four weeks. All right. So it takes 30 days for the forfeiture. Well, when that happens, though, that lien is gone off the property. Now we can move this house with a clean title. So apparently the realtor got some bad legal advice from her lawyer. Oh, and don't forget, guys, I'm not a lawyer, nor am I an accountant. I'm just a go-getter, right? So this is all informational purposes only, but we won this one. Yeah, we won this one because she was greedy. So um, I say, oh, okay, you know, you don't want to take the 5000 I said, they probably they probably aren't going to do anything. You know, they probably won't want it, Um, whatever. So... We start this forfeiture process. Boom. Then uh, the contract holder files bankruptcy. So that kind of slowed it down. But throughout that, the realtor must have got wind that we filed the forfeiture process. The forfeiture process had started. So then she must have found out that that $10,000 was going to stick with the person and not with the house. Because she's like, oh, you guys can't do anything with that house. I got to lean on it. This, that, this, that. Well, you kind of got some bad advice because... Once the go-getters got involved, yeah, we're, we're going to do something with that house. So 
she calls me back and she's like, now she's like, well, you had offered $5,000. And I was like, yeah, well, I don't know if my, my clients, um, interested anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's been a while, whatever. And, um, she's ready to negotiate now all of a sudden. Wait, hold on, dude, one, one second here. Now you want to negotiate. I called you. I was being polite. I was being nice. You know, I was trying to get a deal done, get a transaction done where everybody, um, can win. But for some reason, this one person thought that she had the power and could hold this deal up because of some money, right? Because um, she coveted money, man. So, and then if the if the uh, ten thousand or the five thousand, like she had told me before, if it didn't mean anything, if she didn't need the money, then why would she call me back and try to negotiate again? Come on, guys. You know this is the thing. This is why we got to have this knowledge, and um, we got to have this grit and determination. So she calls me back and she's ready to negotiate now, and I'm like, well. Uh, I'll, I'll see if my client's interested, but I doubt it. <laughs> so guess what I did? I never called her back. I haven't heard from her since, man. You know, she hasn't heard from me. So anyway, so let's get back to these deal numbers, man. So yeah, there's that, guys. Write that down, man. That's some game right there, man. Because uh, you can get rid of some liens and all of that stuff, man. Judgments, you know, because uh, um, if it's not done properly along the way, uh, those liens and those judgments will stick with the property. But if you do it properly after that, pff, it's over with, man. Uh, and you can move, you can, uh, uh, um, you can transfer the deed. So, so we do the forfeiture for five hundred bucks. So I was at, you know, nearly twelve thousand, eleven thousand ninety eight bucks. We do the forfeiture for five hundred. That brings me down to ten ten thousand five hundred and ninety eight dollars. Right? Okay. So next, we're doing a, uh, we're gonna do a quit claim deed. Oop, I, I messed that up. I put a, a M or an N instead of. Instead of an M. Here, let me fix that. Sorry about my handwriting, guys, too, man. I'm left-handed. So anyway, we do a quick claim deed, okay? Now, a quick claim deed is, like I told you before, there's different kinds of deeds. So a quick claim deed, it, it's a no it, it's a no guarantee deed, okay? So you can quick claim it, um, and it's an easy transfer, too, man. You just it's you just fill out a form, man. Yeah, it's a, it, you just fill out a form. And um, I, I've got that form for my go-getters, too, man. Yeah, you're going to love it. Um, you don't even have to go to a, um, a title company or whatever to do a quick claim transaction. It's beautiful. All you got to do um, are just a couple of steps, and that's it. It's over with. Then you can just exchange the check boom, with your um, with your buyer. The buyer and ex the seller can exchange the check. Then you got to do just a couple more things, man. Um, to, to make sure it's righteous, which are, which are nothing. Like, you know, it, they're nothing. So anyway, um, we're going to quit claim it. But it, it's a non-guaranteed title, right? So it says quit claim means like it, it, the title is either marketable, which means it has no liens against the property or anything, or it could have liens against the property. I'm not guaranteeing it either way. And you know this, so you're accepting this quit claim deed and we're going to do this transaction, right? So boom, but we, you know, that's all discussed. Now you do quit claims with like a divorce, um, inheritance, um, estate planning, uh, you quit claim the deed to your trust and things like that, or to your kids, you know, things of that nature. Um, matter of fact, I want to show you guys this quit claim deed real quick. All right, guys, make sure we don't show any uh, personal information here. All right, guys, this is it. it that's it. I'm just covering up the uh, the signature place right there, man. That's it. It's a quick claim. You see quick claim right there? Bing. Okay. And then there's, there's one more page to it. The cover page. That's it. That's it. It's a quick claim deed. That's the deed. That's the deed to the house. And you got to have that big old packet. I just showed you the abstract, but that's it. That now when um, on the file, the county recorder's office, um, um, when you look it up on public record, it's going to say it was quick claimed. So anyway, back to the deal though. Boom. So we quick claim it. That cost me 275 bucks. Okay. Cause I sat there with the lawyer for an hour. Um, he might've slowed it down on me to get that full hour for 275 an hour. Not bad money, right? I think I'm making more at this point, but Hey, go getters. That's what we do, man. We're in this to win, man. But we, we get this knowledge. It takes a while to get this knowledge, too. So then I spent another 100 bucks on notaries and uh, 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 getting the, the documents uh, recorded, okay, for the, for the county and the city. So 
Boom. That leaves me, guys, with a profit, okay, on this house of 10223 bucks. $10,223, guys. 10000 bucks. I'm the bank. I haven't stepped foot in a bank for this deal at all. I had no, no, I didn't have to show any proof of income when I went to buy this house. I, I didn't, um, I didn't do a credit application. There was no credit check, no W-2s, none of that, guys. None of that, go-getters. We are the bank, guys, with creative financing and subject to. There isn't a transaction that we cannot do. I mean, they, there is not a transaction that we cannot do, and I will show you. I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to show you guys the way. So, I mean, you look at all these numbers here. You look at all these numbers here, and the only thing that I paid for out of this, I paid that 500 bucks for the forfeiture, um, and that was it. And then, oh, I've got, uh, I've got a bill coming for the 275 from the lawyer, okay? So, boom, and then I already paid... Um, I paid that little hundred dollars uh, that added up for the notary to get the limited power of attorneys and um, notarize some other documents. And then the document filing, man, with the county, that was it. I made $10,223. So go getters, man. Let's get to it, guys. Man, my go getter family, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys the way. I'm going to give you guys the game, man. Just stick with me on soon. Me and my partner, we got some big things coming for you guys, man. Some huge things, man. So um, just, just, be patient with us, man. And really, you don't even got to be that patient because it'll be here very, very soon, guys. So um, remember what I said, okay, guys, because I'm about to put this, I'm about to um, transition into this video of me in front of city council talking. Um, and it gets, you know, I mean, hey, you know, we're, we're I'm trying to, I'm trying to help these people, man. So, you know, I'm not backing down. You know what I mean? Um, so fear, if I was afraid, I might have been stumbling up there or whatever, man. But there's certain there's certain ways, things you can do to get yourself ready for that, man. And I'll, I'm going to teach you guys that, too. So remember, fear is a made up thing. Right. And faith is a made up thing. So which one are you going to choose? Go getters. Which one are you going to choose? All right. Stick around. Watch the rest of this video until next time. Let's get to it. She told me that they would take the bids for the demolition on the property and to call them before I came out of pocket with the money. So to me, that was an unsatisfactory answer because there's a housing shortage in our community right now. Unfortunately, um, the houses are going to die. Beautiful neighborhood, um, but most of all, if the city chooses to spend ten thousand dollars to demolish that house, there's going to be a ten thousand dollar lien. So when they go to sell the house, they won't be able to sell it until they pay that pay that ten thousand dollar lien. Or if they pass away, there's gonna be that lien on the property, and you know what happens after that. Um, so that's the most unfortunate part about it all. When we have a solution to it, okay. I also brought um, my father here, Scott Wire. He's been a contractor here in Sioux City for four years. Been in business for four years. So he's had some clout on that contract. I'm gonna pass my three minutes right. You're way past. But this right. That was what the solution. I want you guys. I'm to, I don't want you guys to go into contract for a demolition for their house because we have somebody with a note from the bank for thirty thousand dollars of credit that will put up that ten thousand dollar bond. Right. So, so that you guys don't have to demolish it. Probably it's not worth it. Yeah. Do you do any commercial contract? I'll get information. We'll get a result tomorrow morning. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I can walk the county. That's a Guys, right here, it's important to remember that we're working for our sellers. My sellers are hearing impaired. So what I'm doing is writing out a description of what happened in City Hall during that meeting of how we were going to stop that demolition and help our sellers from financial ruin, guys. We're here to help and find solutions. That's what the Go-Getter family is about.